up next, a Virginia woman gets her house raided. Find out why here on NCC News. I'm Tiffany Grandison. And I'm Matt Sandberg. Thank you for watching NCC News Today. The FBI raiding a home in Virginia. A Virginia woman behind bars for a conspiracy and attempt to provide material support for ISIS. FBI on the shirt. This exclusive video shows the FBI raiding this Western Henrico home last week in the 4300 block of Pinnock Road. Court documents filed Monday. We now know why. Astonished by this. I can't even believe that literally something like this is happening right in my backyard. I mean, you see stuff like this on like CSI. Heather Kaufman is behind bars at Pamunkey Regional Jail. She's accused of conspiring and attempting to provide material support for ISIS. The feds allege that on June 23rd, Kaufman on Facebook listed her work and education as Al Jihadifi Sabil Allah, which translates to Jihad for Allah's sake. The feds also claim Kaufman posted two pictures that same day, one saying we are all ISIS, the other a group of men with the virtues of Mujahideen written on it. Horrifying what they're doing. I mean, it's one of those things where I can't even comprehend someone sympathizing. It's just sickening it's alleged uh, oh jerusalem synagogue turned from a peaceful sanctuary to a house of horrors within moments tuesday when two palestinian cousins wielding a gun and butcher knives attacked during morning prayers killing four rabbis and a policeman this couldn't come at a worse time with uh, the whole region literally up in flames uh, you know i think the administration has to do what it is doing which is it has to condemn this unequivocally this horrible act of violence uh, and talk about how this can never be condoned. There's never anything that can justify this. At the same time, uh, the president has to appeal to responsible leadership among the Palestinian community uh, to end uh, a provo provocative acts and also urge the Israeli government to uh, you know, work with restraint and, uh, and not to continue this escalation. In Mexico, a mother is missing her son. He was one out of 43 college students that went missing two months ago. Her son ID was left at the scene, and the way she found it was what will shock you next. It's a pain that knows no boundaries. 50, 51, 52. She says that she just counts the days. A mother missing her son. Abreme, abreme. Pero la puerta nomás. So she, uh -huh. she sí. has dreams at night and she wakes up sí. and, and it's her son's voice saying, open the door, open the door. Hijo. Maria Isabel Alcaraz is one of 43 mothers trapped in an agonizing wait. Her son, Bernardo Flores Alcaraz, went missing nearly two months ago when federal authorities say police ambushed a group of college students and turned them over to a criminal gang. Pero la credencial está aquí. She says her son's ID was left at the scene, something her son promised to do if he ever fell into trouble. ¿Qué es lo primero que piensa? You, well, so you see a bloody ID and what do you think? Yo pienso que, pues, she se says lo that, vivo. that maybe he was wounded, but she thinks that sí. he's alive. ¿Usted piensa que está vivo? Está vivo, sí. Demonstrations have erupted in Mexico, thousands demanding answers about the disappeared. New Jersey is experiencing a big fire that took place in Burlington County. Firefighters had the big blaze under control. Read this while video is rolling. And we will. And as we uh, can show you, crews are battling a four-alarm fire at a farmer's market in Burlington County, New Jersey. They say the blaze is under control. The fire broke out just after 2 p.m. Tuesday inside Building 4 within the landmark Columbus Farmers Market Complex located off Route 206 in Columbus.
Firefighters had a lot on their hands with today's high winds fanning the inferno, but they attacked the flames from all sides with over 150 firefighters on hand. The fire chief said firewalls helped contain the blaze to Building 4. Springfield Township Mayor Dennis McDaniel says us, tells us there are fires between that section and the adjoining section. So I understand that the damage has been pretty well contained to that building four, to building number four, which is quite extensive. Oklahoma child is in foster care after he has gotten bitten by a dog and needed 20 something stitches for his face. Let's hear the story right now. The person they were put in care with had a dog and um, the dog attacked him. I have heard that he had extensive face surgery and many stitches. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad. Today, Oklahoma DHS showed us their policy regarding foster homes with pets. All animals are checked to see if they are in good health, must be up to date on vaccinations, and cannot present a threat to the health, safety, or welfare of children. The system that is supposed to protect children totally failed. DHS tells KFOR that while they're aware of the situation, this truly was an accident. I think he's got like 20 some stitches on the inside and outside of his mouth. But you know, my question is, okay, but what kind of caregiver is that? Still it's only the beginning of November and Buffalo, New York is already getting hit hard by snow. But it doesn't stop there with more snow headed their way for the weekend. The National Weather Service has reported that one part of Chittawaga, New York, has accumulated 51 inches of snow thus far, while on the other side of town, only two inches has been measured, illustrating the incredible snowfall gradient that the Buffalo area is experiencing today. Other notable totals include 48 inches in Alden, 46 inches in Elma, and 45 inches in West Seneca, all in the state of New York. The snow has not let up one bit south of Buffalo this afternoon, where at least 48 inches has accumulated in under 24 hours in Lancaster, Lackawanna, and West Seneca, New York. The snow has become so bad that the National Guard will help to dig people out. How cold is it? Downright freezing. But that's not cold enough to set Chicago weather records yet. The record low for November 18th was set in 1880 with 8 degrees. As of this morning, Chicago's low was 9 degrees at O'Hare International Airport. The record high of 22 degrees for the November 18th was set for in 1903. There's a chance we won't hit that. ABC7 meteorologist Tracy Butler said Tuesday predicted high is only 20 degrees. With the wind chill, it feels more like negative 1 at O'Hare and 3 degrees at Midway Airport. Temps will not be as brutal Wednesday. However, we will probably see light snow during the morning commute, Butler said. Encountered problems on the red, purple, and brown lines when tracks became frozen. Firefighters working on a 311 alarm blaze next to the tracks sprayed the tracks with water. That quickly turned to ice, and it was a thick layer. So service on the line was stopped. That delayed riders trying to get downtown who had to resort to other forms of transportation. For commuters coming from Naples, not Florida, but Italy, it was a shock. Your... I'm from Naples. Uh, for me, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very, very cold. cold, very cold. But there are others who are not bothered by the weather because it comes from where they call home. Yeah, it's a little bit cold, but I'm from Alaska, so it doesn't really bother me. So that's why you still have the flaps up. Yeah, right. So how cold does it have to be for the flaps to come down? That would be like zero degrees, probably. Does the beard help? It does, it really does. And it lets the bears know to stay away. Talk about weather and uh, how cold it's going to be. It is going to be a cold winter. I would not be surprised if it snows on Thanksgiving. Well, coming up next, we will be discussing what's going on in the lobby of NCC's East Campus. I'm Tiffany Grandison. And I'm Matt Sandberg. We'll be right back. You're watching NCC News. NCC just had their club fair where there was over 15 different clubs in the lobby of the East Campus. And each club got to promote one another to more students who might not have heard or signed up. 
Leroy Moore got to interview Autumn Wright, the secretary of the African Cultural Club, and here's what she had to say. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? Can you tell me about your club today? Uh, yes, we are the African Culture Club. My name is Autumn Wright, and I am the secretary. Um, the African Culture Club, basically, we raise awareness and uh, activism throughout the campus, focusing on um, certain activities and, you know, issues that we're all having in the black community. The African Culture Club is open to everybody on campus, but in the club meetings, we do have open discussions about issues that we are having in our communities as a people, working on solutions, you know, talking about different things that might enlighten us up as a people. And we do poetry events, we do Kwanzaa events, you know, when Kwanzaa comes up, we want everybody on campus to understand about the African culture, not just African culture, but black people in, uh, in general. So what is the benefits of the club? Benefits of the club, you walk away with like a really great understanding of certain issues that we talk about. Like every meeting we have different discussions, different topics, different videos, pictures that we all talk about and analyze. And you walk away with like a really great understanding of something that you didn't know. Wow, talking about the events at college, we also had a collection drive at the school called The Day of Thanks, which started in 2011. Alex Ravello has the story now. So can you tell us uh, just a little about what you're doing here? Yes, so this is the fourth annual Day of Thanks. Um, we started this event in 2011. It's a month-long collection drive on campus. Um, and this year we are doing the Hunger Games edition. So it is really a food heavy focus, um, as in the past where we collected clothing, books, toys, like a variety, we really chose to focus on food this year, um, and the Hunger Games part of it is a competition. Um, different clubs, departments, academic, like offices signed up to compete. We had 23 districts, um, and they are competing to see who can collect the most items. Are you interested in transferring to a different college? Maybe you want to change your major. Or did you find a different interest you would like for your career? Leroy Moore has the information right now. School, school, school. You can never get tired of it. Many different colleges came by with information for students who are interested in transferring to different colleges. Is your major boring you? Or are you interested in changing your career? Well, you have many different colleges to choose from. From University in New Haven, Elms College, New York School of Interior Design, Manhattanville College, UConn, Mercy College, to Pace University. Thank you. I am Leroy Moore, and this is NCC News. Veterans Day had just passed, and we have veterans all over NCC's campus. Let's go to Leroy Moore, where he has the story. All right, I'm recording now. Okay. Um, you think you could tell us your name? Uh, Terrell and Burnett. All right, what's your age? 24. Okay. All right, so how old were you when you first went to the Army? I was 18 when I joined the, uh, I was in the Marines, but yeah, I was 18. Okay. And how long was you there for? I was enlisted for four years. Okay. And um, what did you like about it? Um, I liked the fact that it was very challenging. Um, going through boot camp uh, is the hardest part. Um, it taught me a lot about different things, different aspects of life, about what we take for granted and little things like that. Okay. Um, all right, all right. And what did you dislike about it? Uh, the fact that it was so strenuous, it took a toll on basically like how much we did per day because we got up really early and then we weren't able to get off until like later in the afternoon. So. It was a very hectic job. It demands a lot of you, so it really takes a toll on your body. Okay. And um, did it give you like a second perspective of how you look at life? Yeah, it did. Because, um, you know, you see a lot of those bumper stickers that say freedom isn't free. I was uh, deployed twice over to Afghanistan, and it, it really takes an uh, impact on what I learned and what I saw as opposed to like what everybody over here, because Overseas, you don't have a lot of what you have over here, um, as far as like even like grass, trees, birds, dogs. Over there, you don't have any of that. So, and it's the air is thinner. So it's it it yeah. I did. It made me look a, a little different on life. So yeah. All right, all right. Well, thank you. I definitely appreciate it. Um, my name is Leroy Moore, and this is NCC News. Thank you.
Is Taylor Swift going to be the new New York representer? I don't know. Let's see. It seems like Billy Joel has no problem with it. Let's go to the story right now. Billy Joel recently defended the selection of Taylor Swift as the tourism ambassador for New York City. The New York State of Mind singer told USA Today that folks need to lighten up. Swift is a recent transplant to the Big Apple and her latest hit album, 1989, features the single Welcome to New York. As an old detour new town, fellow music scribe and diehard New Yorker Joel further expressed his admiration for Swift. I think she's a talented songwriter, he says. She catches a lot of junk, maybe because she's so popular with young girls. But I like what she's projecting. I respect what she's doing. I am Leroy Moore, and this is NCC News. Coming up next, is college worth the cost? We'll tell you the expensive truth after these messages. You're watching NCC News. So Nearly $239 billion in student aid was handed out last year. Meanwhile, former students are having a hard time paying off their loans after graduation. It begs the question, is college worth the cost? Connor Bowles breaks down the numbers. This is Steven. Hi, Steven. Hey. This is Steven's family. Nice, doggy. Life's good. Steven doesn't worry about much. He has big dreams, and like many people, he's decided that a college degree will help them come true. Go get him, Steven. But before he gets that diploma, Steven has to come up with some big bucks. And if Steven's family hasn't put money away, he'll be in for a tough road. If Steven is like millions of other college-bound students, and Steven is, that means he needs to get a loan. Over 10 years, the number of federal student loan borrowers went up 69%. Between 2012 and 2013, $238.5 billion in student aid was doled out. That's nearly the gross domestic product of Greece. Steven and his mates will borrow an average of $26,500. After four years in a fancy degree, our friend is wiser, more educated, filled with potential, and loaded with debt. Uh -oh. Now Steven has to pay that debt. It will take him 10 years with a monthly payment of $277, and by the end of it, he will have paid $6,700 in interest. And that's not a problem for Steven, as long as Steven doesn't lose his job, start a family, buy a car, have credit cards. Wow. It's no problem as long as life doesn't get in the way. But life does get in the way. It's not always going to be easy, Steven. And while it won't help you pay off your loans, just know you're not alone. Good luck. Thank you for watching NCC News. I'm Tiffany Grandison. And I'm Matt Samberg. Join us next time and have a great day.